What if the future of British aviation had been buried beneath fog, feathers, and forgotten war wreckage? Years ago, Heathrow was bursting at the seams, and the pressure to expand was boiling over. Then came a wild proposal. Ditch the overworked terminals and build a brand new mega airport in the middle of the Thames. Price tag? $76 billion. So what happened? Let's find out. London, a city of six international airports, runs one of the busiest air networks on the planet. Each airport plays its role, from Stansted, known for short-haul European routes, to London City, nestled in the heart of the financial district. But towering above them all is Heathrow, the crown jewel, the main artery connecting London to more than 200 global destinations. Its dominance isn't just about size or history, it's about necessity. Heathrow processes 80 million passengers a year and handles over 40% of the UK's non-EU exports, making it as much a trade hub as a transit point. That level of activity didn't happen overnight. Back in 1930, it was nothing more than a field, 150 acres bought by engineer Richard Ferry for aircraft testing. During World War II, the site was transformed into an RAF base. Post-war, the military tents gave way to commercial terminals, and in 1946, a converted bomber took off from Heathrow on a 35-hour journey to Buenos Aires, marking the start of its civilian chapter. In just a few decades, Heathrow went from grass strips to global powerhouse. But that powerhouse has a problem, and it's getting worse. For nearly 20 years, Heathrow's two runways have been stretched to their limit. Every day is a balancing act with zero margin for error. A bit of fog, a delayed flight, or a surge in travel throws the entire schedule into chaos. And while other airports can spread their traffic across multiple runways or terminals, Heathrow has been stuck at maximum capacity. Forecasts now warn that by 2050, London's airports could be dealing with 400 million passengers a year, more than twice today's total. Without drastic action, travelers can expect higher fares, more delays, and longer lines. Several solutions have been floated. Expanding Stansted or Gatwick seemed like an easy fix, given their locations in less crowded areas. Another idea linked Heathrow and Gatwick by high-speed rail, forming a single, massive hub. But that concept died on the drawing board. Shifting focus to regional airports or even building a new hub in Oxfordshire gained some traction, and then came the minimalist approach. Do nothing, let environmental limits cap growth. But with demand rising fast, that's not a long-term strategy. The most direct route? Expand Heathrow. A third runway could boost flight capacity by over 250,000 per year, introduce 40 new routes, and create tens of thousands of jobs. But it's far from simple. The expansion would mean demolishing nearly 4,000 homes, diverting rivers, and rerouting the busy M25 motorway through a tunnel. Environmental activists aren't staying quiet either. Heathrow is already one of the UK's top carbon polluters. Although the government greenlit the plan in 2018, legal challenges and a global pandemic hit pause. Now, years later, construction hasn't even started. Yet out of all the plans, one stood out, not just for its ambition, but for its audacity. A floating mega airport in the Thames estuary, nicknamed Boris Island after then Mayor Boris Johnson, the plan was officially called London Britannia Airport. It wasn't just about relieving congestion. It aimed to revolutionize British aviation. The blueprint, a six runway airport built partly offshore, capable of handling 150 million passengers annually, almost double Heathrow's capacity. At $76 billion, it would be one of the most expensive infrastructure projects in UK history. Boris rallied experts from every field, architects, engineers, marine specialists, to craft a proposal that felt more science fiction than city planning. Supporters saw it as bold, future-focused, and environmentally smarter, as it would shift air traffic away from heavily populated areas. But critics labeled it a fantasy. Between the fog-prone location, migrating bird routes, and the minor detail of a sunken World War II ship packed with explosives, the risks were colossal. Funding remained the biggest hurdle, However, hopes were pinned on foreign investment, particularly from China. What would this ambitious Thames airport actually look like? It was designed to rise from the very edge of the Isle of Grain, where the Hu Peninsula meets the sea in Kent. 
This wasn't just a flashy idea. It was engineered to sidestep the mess that plagues London's current air traffic. Every takeoff and landing would cut across open water, far from the city's chaos. Forget driving to the terminal. This airport was supposed to be entirely car-free. Passengers would get there by high-speed rail, zipping through tunnels beneath the city. The real twist? There wouldn't even be a traditional airport check-in. Instead, travelers would handle everything at London train stations, custom-built terminals at places like St. Pancras and Ebbsfleet International. There were even talks of planting one at the Royal Docks in East London. It was a bold plan to spread out the pressure and streamline the whole experience. All the heavy lifting, the logistics, the cargo, would run through Sheerness with an upgraded A249, forming a direct link to the M2. Unlike Heathrow, where late-night flights stir protests, this airport was designed to operate around the clock. With three or four runways running simultaneously, it could handle constant movement, day and night. The dream of an airport in the Thames estuary wasn't new. Ideas had been floating since the 1970s, literally. Early proposals pitched floating, runways, and artificial islands, but none of them stuck. That changed when Sir Norman Foster stepped in. Known for reshaping skylines, including the iconic Wembley Stadium, he unveiled a sleek, futuristic vision that actually felt doable. His group, Testrad, claimed it could be up and running in just seven years. The concept drew comparisons to Kansai International in Japan, a floating airport that proved these things could be built. But while Kansai battled earthquakes, Thames Airport had its own nightmares. Powerful tides, choked shipping lanes, and one especially deadly problem, a sunken warship packed with explosives. Testrid put a $76 billion price tag on the project, betting that cost could be offset by bulldozing Heathrow. The idea wasn't just to shut it down, it was to erase it. In its place, a brand new London borough with space for 300,000 homes, a clean slate where planes once roared. Beyond just shifting flights, this airport could have transformed Britain's global reach. Nearly the entire world economy lies within a 13-hour flight from London. And while Heathrow currently leads Europe's airports in traffic, rivals in Paris, Amsterdam, and Frankfurt are closing in fast. If the Thames Airport reached its target of 150 million passengers a year, it would have blown the competition out of the sky. But turning that vision into concrete reality? That's where things got messy. The airport's commission didn't hold back. Their reports painted a picture riddled with delays, complications, and spiraling costs, far beyond the $76 billion estimate. And one of the biggest hurdles was lurking right beneath the surface. Near the proposed construction zone lies the SS Richard Montgomery, a rusted out World War II shipwreck holding over 10,000 unexploded bombs. For decades, it's just been sitting there, too dangerous to touch, too risky to ignore. Building around it wasn't an option, it would have to be removed. But no one was lining up for the job of hauling 1,400 tons of munitions out of the riverbed. Engineering aside, nature had its own set of objections. The Thames is a magnet for birds, and birds and jet engines are a dangerous mix. One strike can bring down a plane. The proposal included ideas for new wildlife reserves, trying to lure birds away from the airspace. But that's easier said than done. You can't exactly rewrote an entire ecosystem. Fog posed another problem. The Met Office predicted that the area would see triple the fog days compared to Heathrow, threatening major delays and disruptions. And that's not all. The skies above the estuary were already jammed with flight paths. Just to add more pressure, the Isle of Grain hosts one of the world's largest liquefied natural gas terminals. Millions of gallons of highly flammable fuel sitting uncomfortably close to where jet engines would roar overhead. Even the head of National Air Traffic Services called it the worst possible place to build an airport. And while it was pitched as a way to reduce noise over London, it created a whole different headache. Replacing Heathrow wasn't just about flights. It would shake up entire industries. Thousands of businesses had planted roots near the airport, many using it as their European base. Shifting operations to the estuary would force them to either move, lose access to key markets, or jump ship to cities like Paris or Frankfurt. The deeper the project was examined, the more it started to unravel. Between the sunken warship, 
the wildlife issues, the fog, and the industrial landmines, the dream began to crack. Nicknamed Boris Island after one of its biggest political cheerleaders, the project eventually lost momentum and faded into the background. So where does that leave London? With the Thames Estuary Airport scrapped, the focus snapped back to Heathrow. The airport just recorded its busiest year ever, with 84 million passengers passing through. Pressures mounting, the long-debated third runway proposal is once again on the table. The current plan? Push through approval by the end of 2025. So, while a gleaming new airport in the estuary captured imaginations, reality pulled the brakes hard, and now all eyes are back on Heathrow, an airport bursting at the seams, bracing for the next big decision in the battle for Britain's skies. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one.